Hey. Was Philippe Alou up there at the time? Was he the manager at the time? No, oh, I was never the manager there. I was a hitting coach in Montreal, and then I was the assistant to the manager. Buck Rogers was the manager. Oh, okay. Buck Rogers, Buck okay. Rogers. All right. So, yes. Yeah, great fella. Good baseball man from what I've heard. And what was so great about Buck was all he wanted to do was run the game and take care of the press and tell me to take care of everything in spring training. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and he didn't even give me a raise for it either. Wow. Well, you should have at least well, got a raise out of it. With the raises. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's not about the money. Well, it wasn't back then. It was about the money, as long as you made enough to live, right? Well, back back when when I was playing, that was so long ago. Everybody was nobody was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, not compared to now. Uh, I I managed the Angels for forty eight thousand a year. And now they're 40, if you give them 48000 that's the change they give to the clubhouse boy. Well, heck, Tor you got, Torcada, you got, like, your rookie season, you got Major League Minimum, which I believe at that time was, like, 330 some thousand dollars or something like that? It was, but I didn't get that, you know, because oh, okay. I, I was up and down, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't. Oh no, I was, I was, you know, I was up, up and down between Triple A, you know, and the big league. So like, I didn't get, you know, only a little bit of that, you know. But now, you know, guys are getting contracts, you know, with a hundred million dollars, and they're still complaining about it's not enough money. I know. Are you kidding me? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, here wow. I, here I do, you know, I do this show, and, and. uh yeah, it's it's for the love of the game. It I mean, is. It but, really is. I mean, you guys are signing, you know, eight years, you know, 150 million, and it's not enough. It's I mean, insane. come on. Yeah, it's, it's insane. It is. It is. <laughs> totally, totally different from when back when you were playing there, Bobby. Yeah, that was a lot. We played for fun, more exactly. or less. Exactly. Uh, uh, no, we didn't get rich, but uh, we got it. We got it. What we did is we had. A good, uh, when we got out of the game, if we had it 10 years at the big leagues, we had, we got it, uh, we, we could, my wife and I could live on that easily. So, mm -hmm. uh, what they gave, gave, what my pension pays. Right. Uh, I feel that's the only reason I left Arizona State. Right. I didn't want uh, to, to stay there, even if it meant maybe winning another five, six uh, championships. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to sit down when uh, Ellie and I got old and uh, have, a, have a good living, and that's the way it happened to work out. Nice. And so now, so you won, what, three national championships at Arizona State? We won three. We went four times. We won three of them. And so tell us about, tell us about those old days. Now, was it still in Omaha back then? Omaha well, didn't have the new park they have now. Right. Uh, and, but it was at Omaha, and uh, I had some great players. And uh, you, you know, uh, you, you, I don't care how good a coach you are. There are coaches better than others, but and managers that are a little better than others. But you. Uh, didn't you and I talked a little bit about who was it just went to, got was with uh, with us at uh, ASU and now got the San Diego State uh, at the San Diego Big League managing. I, I think so. Yeah. You know who it was? You remember? I I don't remember. Well, uh, anyway. He ran into he 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 did not have a good ball club, you know. He didn't go get a get a chance to go to a decent, a real a good ball club. And I don't care, especially if you're out of college. You're not you you you'd be lucky to get a good ball club. Right. My ball club for my two and a half years, the first year, I was seventy nine and eighty three. Mm -hmm. That I've managed, and the best the Angels had done in eight years was not that good. Right. Year, year, year and a half later, they fired me. Those rats. <laughs> oh, really? Oh man. 
So they fired me, and Charlie Finley called me, and he said, uh, hey, but 10 days later, and he said, Bobby, I'm firing my, my third base coach, get your butt over here. We're going to play the Yankees tomorrow. <laughs> Sweet. That was in 1974, we won the World Series. So my thing to say to all of you is getting fired isn't always too bad. That is true. Sometimes that it works true. out for the better. You know, sometimes... <laughs> uh, so tell us... But I'm older and I don't remember as well as I used to, but I still enjoy the game and I enjoy talking about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Montreal was just a wonderful place to go be, and because uh, uh, you, you can play golf if you're a coach in the morning and go to the ballpark at noon and uh, have a great time. And those people there just took me in, took me uh, to, to any time I wanted to go play golf, I could go and they'd come give me a shirt. When I, I mean, they were so good to me, I thought that I was the son of a bunch of them. That's the way it's supposed to be, like family. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they were They were good. So tell us a little bit about Charlie Finley. What kind of man was Charlie Finley? I can't tell you how bad he was. No, I just want to know what kind of a man he was. I don't want to know how bad he was. I just want to know what kind of a man he was. So he hired you. Yeah. And uh, tell me a little bit about Charlie Finley. Well, Charlie Finley uh, never... He he complained about the manager and the coaches all the time. Ed can't do that. We need better speed and... We don't have two guys in a team that can run for us, but he wants good speed. And uh, he wants to tell you who's going to play in the World Series, but uh, we got him on that one. <laughs> and uh, when we went in to meet, you know, you meet and uh, you get about 50 pages to go through. To, to, we were playing the, the uh, Dodgers. So he comes in and he says to them, to us guys, what's the, what's the lineup look like? Who you got catching? <laughs> and uh, we told him who we had catching, and his, his name was Ray. Tony, come up with something. Ray Birmingham. <laughs> no, he was, and the other the other guy was uh, was a better hitter. But not as good a catcher. Right. So he's so and he says to, looks at Alvin Dark says, Alvin, who, who you what do you think? We're gonna take a vote here. He said, I wanna take uh, the guy that catches the best. He looked at the at the pitching coach and said, What about you? He said, The guy that pitches the best. And he asked, Okay, Winkles, what do you think? And I said, The guy that catches the best. And he said, oh, you guys, I, that really upsets me. You had a meeting before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now, 74, you guys won the World Series, and Reggie Jackson was on that team, correct? Oh, no. yes. Reg, guys that played for the ASU, uh, <laughs> Reggie Jackson was on the team. And Sal Bando was Sal on the Bando. team. Yep. Sal Bando was the captain there for seven years. Wow. And uh, so we had two guys on that team. We would have had Monday. We would have had three, uh, except he traded him to uh, Chicago uh, for a pitcher for which my name does, it doesn't remember. Right. So... And and he, uh, he, uh, I thought when I went there as the coach, I thought he was going to ask me to feed his mule, but he didn't. But, you know, he loved that mule. He had him out on the field every day. <laughs> and let people tread, a, tread, uh, tread at him and make him feel good. So, uh, he, he was a brilliant man. I never called him anything but Mr. Finley. Right. I called him that because of the place he held in baseball. Most people call him Charlie, but he was a brilliant man. And uh, uh, 
he just he just put he just put himself in the in the coach's way too much, but you got away with most of it. Right. What was your what was your favorite part about about putting on the uniform every day? My favorite part? Your favorite part about putting on the uniform was it the fact that you were at a base I mean that you were making a living coaching baseball um what was what was your favorite part about the whole thing? Well, I was on a, a farm in Arkansas and by the time I was 13 I was driving a tractor for 12 hours a day. And uh, and uh, I got to play ball, baseball on Thursday and Saturday with a team of guys, older guys. And one day I just kind of looked at that and I said, you know what? I'm not going to be a cotton farmer. <laughs> and from that time on, I just loved baseball. My brother and I played. Uh, we didn't have any place thing to any place to go play, but we played pepper day after day after day. I think it's just the sound of, you know, the baseball hitting the wood bat, you know? Yeah. It's just that sound and, you know, the fresh cut grass and, you know, you know, just, just wanting to go up there and compete, you know. He gets back against the barn and then he catches the ground ball and throws it back to me. Mm-hmm. And I, and when we do that, I do that to him 50 times and he does it to me 50 times. And we were both were, were excellent infielders, but uh, the bat seemed to be a little short on my end. <laughs> yeah, it's short on a lot of ends, unfortunately. Yeah, I got I got to AAA for a couple uh, years, and and uh, then I knew I wasn't going to make it. Our first daughter came along, and family always comes first with me. Right. So I just uh, said I'm going to be a coach. A college coach, I mean a base, a high school coach or something. I went to University of Colorado where I got my master's degree while I was playing baseball. And uh, he said, I said, uh, Dr. Bart- Bartelma, I'm tired. I've been playing seven years. I want to get out. Do you know any high schools that like to have a coach? He said, I've got two guys that with the college guys that want, and one was Arizona State, and uh, the other one was in somewhere in California. And so I said, I'll take the one in, in Arizona. He said, okay. And uh, he, he, was, he was going fishing. And he told me, he said, uh, now, Bobby, I got one thing to tell you. You, I, you got to promise me you won't when spring training comes that you get the hot foot and want to go back and do it again. And I said, no, sir, I'm done. And so he said, I'll give you a th- I'll give you six thousand dollars a year to co- to coach to give me get me a team. And they they didn't really have a team in a, a Congress in a in a in uh, anywhere in the uh, NC two A, and uh, I said, "Well, you know, I went to Venezuela and played last year. I played with, uh, and uh, I made eight thousand there." And he said, <laughs> "Bobby, the fish might be biting six thousand three hundred dollars. Yes or no?" And I said, "Yes, sir." <laughs> And, and then and that's there's the history. Job. I never saw the man. He never saw me. He just took the word of the professor that was my my professor in uh, at the University of Colorado. Wow. Well, Bobby, we need we need. I'll, I'll give you a call here in another day or two, and we could sit down and we could chat about um, doing that segment. And you know, maybe something we can do is, you know, where I call ahead and we could do like 20 minutes of little snippets of stories that you can do and we could share it and we'll call it in a wink with Bobby Winkles. And so, you know, I love hearing the stories of, for me, this is what it's all about. You know, hearing the old timer stories of the game back, you know, when honestly it was played the right way. It was I mean, back then. That's the way you the know, game was played. I mean, it's, it's so different now than what it was back when you were playing. And, and that's, you know, truly for the love of the game, and that's what it's, you know, meant to be played. 
And so That's all. we all love the game, and we we're all good friends too. All of the guys. Absolutely. And so we definitely love to have you back on, and uh, we love talking baseball with you. I love hearing the stuff. Well, I don't. I don't mind talking baseball anytime. Uh, uh, I just think it's a wonderful game, and I think it's. Uh, uh, slowed down too much now, and uh, I don't really watch a lot of baseball. I can't sit three and a half, I'm, can't sit three and a half hours to see a baseball game. When we when we were playing, it'd be two hours and fifteen minutes or something. And, and now it's just forever five pitchers a game, <laughs> and uh, that was a good move in the game. Uh, but it just slowed down the game. Right. Now the guys are on pitch counts. You know, yeah. Back then they throw 250 pitches. You know, ESPN is blowing up this Yankee Red Sox. <laughs> they got the Yankees and Red Sox playing this weekend. And, yeah. you know, I'm just smacking my head because, you know what, I can't sit down for three and a half hours and watch baseball either. I haven't watched one game, you know, even on TV, uh, full nine innings. Uh, it's I mean, hard. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it well, is hard. I, if I'm around, fellas, and uh, if anybody tells you that uh, they enjoyed the the, the 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 stories or not, then I'll be glad to try to hook up some. Absolutely. But, uh, what I need is to get somebody to, that knows someone. Well, you're Tony that knows one someone that will publish a book for me. It's a good book. It's a it's a it's a a book about uh, how a cotton picking guy made it with and uh, made know. it to the major leagues. The name of the book is from the cotton from the cotton patch to the major leagues. I'm sure a lot of people would love to publish that, Bobby. You know, we'll we'll check. Uh, and I know a lot of the guys at ASU are going to buy it. A lot, a lot mm-hmm. of the guys that they paid for me, but we just it's just hard to find. Uh, Someone to publish it for you uh, see because what we can do. they're now publishing all, all on disc. They yeah. all are on these discs, and you stick in the disc and listen to the game while you're driving or whatever. Right, but, that'd be awesome. Uh, but uh, kind of give me a little warning in the morning or the day if if you're going to have me back again. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, I'll uh, do what I can. I'll, do, I'll be like a mule. I'll do the best I can with what I got. So, <laughs> so what I want to know is, have you had dinner yet? No, I haven't. What are you What are you having for dinner tonight? Uh, gonna have a hamburger. Oh, there you go. So my favorite. <laughs> are you Are you like homemade from home, or are you getting it from somewhere? <laughs> well, sometimes Ellie makes them, and you know, she, she We've been married sixty two years, so. Uh, she gets what she wants to do. There, there you go. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah, that's the way I it is in my house. Yeah. Years. I took care of her a few years, and she took care of me fifty-two, uh, seventy-two years. So she gets what she needs, and she is uh, the uh, my wind, beneath, the wind beneath my leg. Yep. Yeah, that's the way it is with mine. I've been married almost a year and a half, and uh, yeah, she's absolutely the boss. So yeah. there is there okay, is no guys. question about it. <laughs> All so. right. All right, Bobby. Hey, right, it was Bobby. great talking to you, and uh, we will chat with you a little bit later. Okay, thanks a lot, All right, guys. thank you. Take care, Bobby. All right, once again, Mr. Bobby Winkles. Man, we... I, I hope he uh, comes back and, and does some little short <laughs> stories with us. I like I like hearing him talk. You know, he's got the best stories. You know, the old school stories. The old school stories are the best stories. There was there was a guy um, that you might have known by the name of Rocky Bridges. I don't know if you um, ever came across Rocky Bridges. I don't I don't recall. Rocky was eighty five, eighty six. Was was just one of those old baseball guys. Managed with the Giants in like Phoenix, like in the early seventies. Yeah, well, see, my dad would know all these guys. He was a baseball so, guru back in. The, but back he then. was he was the big guy that has the big old chaw mm-hmm. in the side I've of his mouth, it. looks like a chipmunk, and just a great baseball guy to talk with. He passed away. Gosh, it's been what about maybe six, seven months ago. It wasn't very long ago. It was like right before my dad passed away, and um, yeah, I, I love talking with those. Those old guys. Um, there was a guy who was with the A's, 
And I remember seeing him in Modesto. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't in Modesto. It was in Stockton over there at Banner Island. And he was old and really frail. But here he was in an age uniform, chain smoking, and he must have been 85 at that time. So this is 2006. Had the smallest glove I've ever seen. And he had talked about how, you know, he goes to these Latin countries and teaches infield at his age back then. For the life of me, I wish I could remember his name. Oh, man. You know, I got to find that out. Yeah, they're short gloves, though. You know, they, they use those in the Dominican. Yeah. You know, that's why you see the Dominican guys are so good at fielding. That's why. They, you know, they play on the worst fields, though. Right. Now, so, did you did you play did you play in any of the Winter League? I played, actually, yeah. I played two years in Venezuela. Okay, and what was that like? Oh, man. That was, it, it, it was a great experience, and the baseball was top-notch. Right. I mean, you got the best competition. You, you do. You have the best competition. But the living conditions were, were pretty bad, you know. We right. We had to stay in our hotel and, um, you know, pretty much just go to the park and back, you know. But um, oh, but, but the but the competition, man, you're going to get better if you go over there. Absolutely. I mean, the, you're going to learn how to hit a breaking pitch. Right. You know, off-speed pitch. And those guys can throw it, you know. They're throwing 95-plus, you know. But you got all the big names over there, too. You right. Know, all those all guys the stars. Play. Yeah, yeah, they play in the Winter League, so you're, you're playing against the best. That is one of my bucket list items is to make it to a Caribbean mm -hmm. World Series. Mm -hmm. You know, probably down in Mexico because it's closest. Mm -hmm. But um, But it's great baseball. You know, one You're of these days, it. and we've had Eddie Diaz on, who's managed um, the Mexican team to a couple of titles. Um, but yeah, no, you, yeah, you get the biggest names. Oh man, but and, you know, but the competition, the pitching over there. I mean, you're going to get better. Like I said, if you play over there, right? Know? So yeah, it's, plus it, back then gas was probably forty cents. And a you're gallon. not a real. I don't think you're not a real baseball player until you go play over there. That's right. my opinion. Okay, you go play in the winter leagues in Venezuela, Dominican, or Mexico. Right. You know, you're you're in. I mean, that's where it's at. You know, if you can survive playing in that league and you do well, you know. But I, I advise that you know if anybody can get over there to play. Guys in the minor leagues go over there and play. All right. Once again, Mr. Tony Torcado in studio uh, co host today. Hey, and, thanks for having um, me again, man. Not this a first problem. Time, but I love being on here. This is fun. So that's producer Brian. I'm Norm. We are sponsored by baseballism.com. Check them out. Even uh, chat with them a little bit. They might even give you a 10% discount if you mention Clubhouse Chatter. BaseballDudes.com, Chris Gazelle. To be the best, you must train like the best up there in Vancouver, Wa. Mm -hmm. Base by Pros, Mitch Canham. Also, Brent Lilledbridge is part of that. I don't know if you remember Brent or not. I do a little bit, yeah. He was brave. Up there in Washington as well. MDM Design, um, check them out. They do great for shirts and hats and whatnot. They do our shirts for 9 dollars know it all Yamhilltoday.com. Every, uh, every time we broadcast, we're streaming live on yamhilltoday.com. Hey, if you want to sponsor us, give me a shout-out. Normbo18 at gmail.com. Doesn't have to be monetarily. Could be items or whatever. Let's talk. We're on Twitter, Clubhouse Chatter with one T. We're on Facebook. Um, YouTube, iTunes, and um, that is Brian uh, telling me to shut up and uh, move on. So, hey, final segment coming up at 545. We've got Nova Newcomer from Friends of Baseball up in Portland. They're doing great things up there, um, strengthening the game, doing things for kids up there in the Portland area. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be back. <laughs>